All right. Hey, hello. Welcome everyone to my channel. Um, today we're playing a game called, uh, I forgot the name of it. It's called Milk Outside a Bag of Milk Outside a Bag of Milk. It's, I, I don't know. <laughs> That's just the name of it. I just saw it on Steam and I was like, you know what? This this will be an interesting game to play. Um, so it's a point and click kind of game, as you can see. It's kind of moving the mouse around, click on things, and we get to figure out what's going on, what's happening. So I guess there's these fireflies we have to like find and collect. Uh, just a heads up, there's going to be a lot of flash warning, a lot of graphic things that are kind of like you know not normal so this is just a, a warning <laughs> so other than that let's get let's get right into it and this game's based all in sound so for example see how it's like everything's highlighted no sound right or at least like you know the things i'm clicking on but then there's this So I don't know if that's supposed to be like an indication to like that's what I'm supposed to click on, but we're just gonna we're just gonna look around and see. I tilt my head backwards and almost fell over. The closet is hanging under the ceiling. At least 300 feet off the wall. Are you joking? Even though it's my room, not everything here is for me to use. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care at all. Look, totally. And I'm definitely not worried. Not even the littlest bit. Not even a smidgen of, of a littlest bit. Not even for a thousand of a percent. That's how much I don't care. Hey, I'm not even done talking to you. How much I don't care. From this moment on, I'm ignoring you. Oh no you don't. Then act normal. I turn my eyes toward an inconspicuous conspicuous shelf near the mirror. There's a glass with a toothbrush sitting on it, and a small towel is hanging nearby. What a wonderful sight. My fireflies are smart and good. They would never get in there. They know about they know about personal hygiene. Okay, let's look somewhere else. I look at the mound of pills and it makes me feel dizzy. I don't want to think about it. I don't. What's wrong? I almost skipped my dose for today. How reckless. I could have died. Calm down, you already fixed that. Yes, because you ordered me to. Things could have been much worse. Yeah. I have a deep sigh. Come closer. I heave a deep sigh. Come closer and extend my hand. Wow, it's warm. The moment the, those words leave my lips, one of the bottles overturns. Pills rain down from it and along with them. A firefly, hooray! After signaling above my head and a, co a couple of times, it finally lands in my palm. The firefly rushes up my arm and upon reaching my shoulder, crawls straight into my ear and my mind becomes a bit clearer. Ugh. But yeah, we're looking for these fireflies. Right. Insects enjoy pollinating the flowers and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I guess. I get closer to the flower shelf. I sniff around. The leaf smells of dust and cardboard and death. You know those plants are long dead, right? I'm not sure a dead plant will be able to attract any insects. Well, we kind of don't have a choice here, you know? Still, you're right. Let's continue searching. Why don't you just throw them out? Aren't you listening to me at all? Oh, 
I look at the alarm clock. Time continues its unstoppable flow. It's so late. Are you tired? You bet I am. I let out a theoretic yawn and hold out my arms to the sides. One, two. Then I realize. Then I raise them above my head. Three, four. Maybe a little workout will help me freshen up. Good idea. Do you remember the exercise you've been taught? I think so. I take a hesitant stance. Was it heels together, toes apart? Whatever, I'll go with that. Count down five minutes. Fine, you have a, cl you have a clock right in front of you though. I can't look at its, I can't look at it, its hands for too long. At first I feel like they start moving in the wrong direction and then, this, and then they disappear altogether. And then things always get messy. <coughs> Last time I saw a pair of eyes on the clock face, and also, I used to hear voices back in the day. They plead for help, I think. What a mess, truly a mess. It was a mess, right? A mess. Well, are you counting down? My god, finally. What do you mean? I was trying to get get through you get through to you for half an hour. Huh? Forget it. Did you see the firefly? No. Let's continue searching then. I look at my laptop, I haven't touched it for years, so it's covered with a layer of dust as thick as my fingers. A bizarre item. I fear it. Why? It's a long and boring story. Wonderful, tell me about it. Um, I insist. I remember how it appeared in my room. One of my parents probably bought it, brought it here because they couldn't find a better place for it. They didn't prohibit me from using it. On the other hand, they encouraged me to do so. Sure, I spent my whole days in front of the screen. Games, drawing, engineering, calculators, 3D modeling, so much fun stuff to do. You had a zoom, you had a, a, wait, you had a zoomy mod hobbies? Yeah, I did. Before entering the web. Huh? Imagine this, you're a hamster that lives underground. Get everything for a comfortable living. Did you imagine? As always, your analogies are spot on. Okay, I imagined. Alright, so you're a hamster that lives underground. You have everything from comfortable living. For comfortable living, right? Okay. Wonderful. And here's, what, and here's the situation. You're a hamster that lives. Okay, I get it. Do you want to talk about something else? Yeah. Fine. Suddenly a firefly slowly crawls out of the laptop's vent grill. I reach for it. It gets on top of my palm, blinking all the while. I think it's trying to say something. I can see that myself. If only I knew what. Looks like a cipher. Do you want to crack it? I change my mind. I have absolutely no desire to find out what it wants to say. The firefly stops going for a moment after that. And it starts glowing again, as if it's coming back to its senses. For some time, it thinks about the further course of action. And it flies up and dashes into my ear. Let's continue searching. I doubt it. All of the compartments are locked. What if? I don't even want to think about what's inside. Who knows what I'll end up imagining. Okay. The umbrella emits a faint sense of coolness. No wonder. It's the only thing that defends me against the thunderclouds that gather under my ceiling. It's such a blessing that it can do it without my help. Still, a firefly won't hide in a place like that. It will catch a cold and be unable to fly. 
You don't want to check it? Why? I'm sure we won't find anything there. Okay. This is my sketchbook. Half of its pages are blank, which means I'm still... I'm, which means that it'll still be good for a couple of years. You draw that rarely. Why? Isn't it that obvious? If I ran out of pages, I'll have to buy a new sketchbook. If I can't get it to the... The stationary store on... If I can't get to the stationary store on foot, I'll have to take the bus. Do you, even, do you even realize what kind of pipe bear that can turn into? Let me ask your mom to buy you one. Buy what? Ask whom? Can you even form coherent sentences? <laughs> Don't play dumb. Ask your mom to buy you a new sketchbook instead. Instead? So you want me to prefer a string of to perform a string of actions, but you're also telling me to do one instead of the other? Then how would I decide which action to take? You're so dyslexic. Man, you're a tough case. You lack empathy. Is that my fault? I get closer to the sketchbook, stepping over the wires, the sleeping bag, the cracks in the laminate, and the window's reflection. The sketchbook is lying on the stool. From my height, it seems like the stool is missing two legs. I squat and I look again. All the legs are in place. Will I be able to think of an interesting allegory? Hmm. Let's not go there, okay? I stand up and study the sketchbook from inches away. Its pages are pure white. The last drawing is buried on the previous page. The way it should be. Too bad. I'd love to see it. Maybe next time. A sudden gust of chilly wind breaks into the room and makes the pages rustle. Oh no. I shut my eyes. A distinctive sound of pages turning echoes with headache in my head. I know what's going to happen. The rustling has stopped. Even though the wind is still howling from every direction, it can only mean one thing. The notebook is opened on the first page. If I wait a little longer, the wind will close it. I won't have to look if I wait a little longer. If I wait. Do we wait? No. It's okay, just do it. No way. I know you're lying. Calm down. No. Okay, fine. I'll open my eyes with that utmost caution. With the utmost caution. The notebook is still open in the middle. No drawings, nothing. The pages are still pure white. Did I imagine it? I don't know, did you? You're the smart one here, you tell me. Next time, don't close your eyes. What did you... I couldn't finish speaking because the pages started moving again. Don't close your eyes. Don't make me do it, I'm scared. Trust me. The rustling glow grows louder. The pages lift up. I can almost see the outlines of the drawing on previous pages. No way. Everything that is in the past should stay in the past. You couldn't convince me. That's it, I'm closing my eyes. Look, look there. A barely visible light seeps through the pages. With every new gust, it's becoming, it becomes brighter and brighter. A firefly. The wind immediately stops for a moment. The world sinks into perfect silence, but only for a moment. The bus has always been haunting me, fills the surrounding, but it doesn't matter now. Goodness gracious, little boy. You made me so scared. The firefly blinks, flies up in, and enters my ear. It's been some, I, it's been some time looking for the perfect spot in my head, and then it, its buzzing dies down. Phew. Are you okay? We're running short on time, so let's continue searching. Finish searching? 
I look down, my school bag, worn down and silly, it's almost screaming of its own uselessness. For another, from another angle, it looks like a full belly. Its contents are also regurgitating, decomposing, and turning into a sticky, mushy substance. What a cool image. I need to remember this. Totally not cool. Tell me what's inside your bag instead. Nothing special. Mostly just sorts of books. I'm taking out all the pens and notebooks out of there. And I'm not interested in anything else. You used to go to school, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I had a blast all the way. Are you sure you understood my question? Did you think everything in my room should be doom and gloom? Well, you're wrong. Alright, alright. What did you like most there? Hmm. Well, the rooms were really bright. Not like at home. That's it? Don't rush me. Let me remember. Well, the beds were really soft. Were also soft. And the food was nice. By the way, I attended all the classes. The others always skipped. They probably got told off so hard. Told off so hard. I smiled gently, absorbed in warm memories. You never graduated, though. Yeah. Do you remember your last day there? It was a normal day. Dad picked me up earlier than you, earlier than usual. He told me that I. He told me that I'm already too old for for the school's curriculum. I also realized that some time ago, the tasks were way too easy. Then we got into the car and went home. Mom greeted us there, and we had dinner and went to our rooms. And what happened then? I don't remember. It doesn't even matter. Okay. Good. I look at my bag again, light pouring into the room through the window glints on the material, on the metal parts. There's also a, a shadow underneath it, which means it's really, well, which means it's real, sadly. Whatever, I don't care anyway. I almost ended up kicking the bag in a fit of sudden anger, but I managed to stop myself in the nick of time. If I moved it even an inch, the whole picture will collapse and I'll go blind. It already has happened countless times. What do you mean you'll go blind? I spent months memorizing the location of every item in my room. That's why I can see them so clearly and vividly. You won't get it. But get your feet. I look down and see the small insects is crawling towards me from my bag. It's barely, it's barely glowing and it can't even fly. I guess this firefly is really tired. I bend down to pick it up. The firefly starts glowing brightly as soon as I touch it, and then it flies up. There you go, boy. Good job. After doing a victory lap around the room, it flies towards me with high speeds. I shut my eyes, anticipating the firefly to enter my ear. That's exactly what happens. After it gets inside, it buzzes a little while longer, and then it goes silent. This one is kind of sad. I wonder why. It doesn't matter. What matters is that it's no longer alone. Sure, let's continue searching. See, we got how many more. How many more spots? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then I guess ten. I get closer to the waste bin and I look inside it with curiosity. Pills, packaging, notebook pages, and other garbage. Boring. There's nothing here. Indeed, no self-respecting firefly would hide in a heap of garbage. Can't disagree with you here. Your usual notebook pages, glued to the wall with duct tape. Numbers are drawn on them. It's only the kind of information I can take in without trouble. Dosage and side effects? Yeah. I thought you knew them by heart. 
Yeah. This is not your handwriting, is it? Of course it's not. Shaky, broken lines, ugly numbers. It's not it's not writing. It's more like claw marks. Don't forget to thank your mom. I don't need your advice. My screams make the pages rustle restlessly. Restlessly. After a moment, a firefly appears from underneath one of them. After looking around in a business-like manner, or busyness, it takes off into a bustinous, bustinet-like flight, and ends up entering my ear. Hey. Let's continue searching. <laughs> this is my sleeping bag. It's soft and warm. I'm sure there's no living creature that would be able to resist the temptation to spend a minute or two inside. They want to dig into it with a couple of favorite items. Close their eyes and then... Hey, did you fall asleep? Huh? I gently slap my cheek to return myself to senses. It's already way past midnight. Usually I'd be asleep like a log at this time, but right now I can't. Let's continue searching. Hey, maybe we'll find something inside. Nah, my thoughts don't have a feature of putting, of putting to sleep. Quite the contrary, they always cease, they always cause insomnia, just like tonight. Okay. <laughs> What's so funny about that? I imagine myself being a firefly that is looking straight at a giant fan, and I'd be so jealous. The only thing preventing it from flying is a cage it's locked in, and the cable. It's like an inmate, if you think about it. It's so sad. Yeah. Let's continue searching. Right, yeah. I didn't like that sound. What are those? Ah, those. Those are the photos of my best memories. But they're blank. I stared at them so intently that I burned them with my eyes. <laughs> now they're just covering the cracks in the walls. Cracks? Forget it. Are we continue searching? Are we continue the search or what? Are okay. We are. I look up towards a very high place under my ceiling. I can hear a countless numbers of small legs marching inside the AC unit. I don't like that sound. Oh well. What happened? Fireflies can't be friends with cockroaches. We better look somewhere else. Why would cockroaches be in there? Have you forgotten? You're the one who told me to think of my thoughts as cockroaches. Yes, but... They became fireflies afterwards, but cockroaches don't disappear just like that. So they occupied this space, this place. Do you understand now? I do. It's not easy to get out of here. <laughs> One last spot to check. Oh wait, I didn't get the lights. Are you serious? What's wrong? Just think about it. Why would fireflies be attracted to light? I think they're quite self-sufficient already in that regard. Well, only if they purposely went to lower their self-esteem. Huh. I just thought it'd be a place to click. Alright, now let's check this. 
it won't let me click on it. Oh well. Fine. Finish searching. How many more do we have to find? You found all the fireflies. Amazing. I guess... I managed to gather my thoughts, but something still worries me. On the other hand, I wasn't supposed to be happy anyway. Why not? If I lose something and, and then find it, it's just going to go back to the starting point. No changes at all. All zero sum. And happiness is always about being positive, right? You shouldn't think too much. It hurts you. I want to sleep. How about you go get some fresh air before sleeping? What do you mean? Well, go to the balcony, breathe in some fresh, breathe in some air. Somehow those words triggered a panic attack in me. I subconsciously step away from the balcony. I don't think it's a good idea. Why? This may sound silly, but I feel like someone is watching me. Alright, let's stay in. Let's stay here. Yeah. What are you going to do? What's with this silly question? I'm going to sleep, of course. Hoping that tomorrow will come after a year or a decade. Imagining myself to be outside of my mortal shell, but at the same time still being me. Ridiculous. Like milk outside of a bag of milk. And yet. And yet. You don't have to talk out loud for me to understand that you're worried about me. I know that already. I also know that our time is running short. You won't take another pill. Of course not. In fact, I won't take it tomorrow either. And the day after tomorrow. And never, ever. That's goodbye then? No. I have one more small favor to ask. A really, really small one. What is it? I blurted out way too much today. A lot of stuff I want to forget forever. I don't blame you, but was it really necessary? You'll see tomorrow. No, I wouldn't be able to sleep like this. Fine. What's your favor? I, um... I never really scratch my wrist and bite my lower lip. Wait a minute. You're afraid to tell me? Yes. I'm also scared that something big might happen if you, if I tell you. I'm also scared that when something bad happens, something way worse will happen. Stop. I get it already. Still, I won't leave you alone until you tell me. Bully. <laughs> no you. to my sleeping bag. The lower part of the room is very cold. I hurry to wrap myself in blankets, even though the electric heater is working hard to keep me warm. I'm sad because the dreams just won't come anymore. You won't believe me if I tell you how I dealt with it at first. Of course I'll believe you. I know. It was a joke. Well, anyway, I wash my face, brush my teeth, Lying down and started imagining what I'm what I'm watching a dream. And imagine that I'm watching a dream. I didn't sleep at all, of course, and always looked sleepy in the morning. Of course a week of insomnia, I started feeling weird and seeing things. Letters floating in the air, strange silhouettes that appear in the most unexpected of places bulging eyes with tripling pale pupils. It was scary, you know? Then one day I almost died. I just collapsed in the middle of the room and couldn't move for a while. And then silhouettes, letters, and eyes were hanging over me and hissing. It was horrible. 
and well deserved I guess? It felt like I was caught on the biggest lie in the world. Yes, it felt exactly like that. After that, I stopped. But the silhouettes, letters, and eyes stayed here. I guess they liked this place. They always follow in my wake, peeping at me. And I'm kind of scared of them and can't even argue with them. But today, today, well, I still, still too scared to tell me. Of course, they're still listening, you know. Use your hands. All right. I started chaotically twirling my fingers with enthusiasm, forming complex shapes. You want me to tell you a bedtime story? Shh. I was trying so hard here. Did you? Don't you get it? They'll hear you. Relax. Nobody can hear you. So what do you say? I'll be happy to, but I have no idea how to tell them. Oh, it's incredibly easy. Just talk about something without. Just talk about something without stopping. Sounds silly, but it's not. And meaningless. You don't know what you're talking about. I know. I know enough to realize that we'll just end up wasting time. Let's focus on something actually important. Boring. Fine. Close your eyes. You won't get it. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. Uh, let's see. Well, I'm gonna... I think I can end the episode here? I don't know. I'm gonna keep going for a little bit. I wake up on a wooden bench. In front of me lies a narrow, dimly lit alley. An awfully familiar road. Where could I have seen it? Finally. I hear a voice coming from the side. I turn around and see a boy with a weird expression on his face. You're late. Uh, who are you? The boy blinks in bewilderment. We're not going anywhere like this. Try again. Then he takes a very deep breath. You are late. I stare at him, confused. He stares back, also confused. Sorry? The boy nods, satisfied. See? Much better. Do you have a name? My name's... Terska. I... I give the brat an evaluating look. He's so young, yet already coming at me with a question like that. None of your business. Besides, will anyone tell me what I'm doing here? Hey, that's rude. It's like there's somebody he, uh, somebody else here besides me. Haven't they told you anything? I know all that there is to know for one. About what? You're obligated to escort me, escort me to the store. Terska says that and strikes a victory pose. No way I'm doing that. You do understand that refusal is futile. Well, aren't you full of yourself? I'm serious. I'm not the one who decided that. Do you think I'm delighted with your company? He's weird. Constantly shifting between happiness, sadness, loudness, silence. He's a wacko, and his name is stupid. <laughs> Are we going or what? You can go, and I need to think. I'll be happy to, but I don't know the way. Terska puts up a puts on a cunning smile. I bite my lower lip in frustration. I'll be honest with you. I don't like you. He, si <laughs> he simply burst out laughing and replied. I do like you though. And he grabs my hand without hesitation. I don't even have time to, re to retort. Lead the way. Our trip to the store went fine. If not for the fact that Tresca was walking faster than me. And on the other hand, at times he stopped abruptly and went backwards, setting in the ground underneath his feet. In the end, the trip took a lot longer than it should. 
After reaching the store's doors, we are greeted by a sign. We're closing in 20 minutes. We had the bright idea to indicate their working hours in this way. They probably have special staff for this. Someone who runs to change the sign every five minutes. It's convenient. Are you joking? Yeah. You're so annoying. It's much better than being boring. How old are you, by the way? None of your business. <laughs> and what's your name? None of your business. I was ready to slap the living hell out of this brat. But a scary looking man suddenly appeared behind the glass. He was holding a cardboard sign that says we're closing in 15 minutes. Let's go. What are you waiting for? Huh? Oh yeah. After another round of going across the long row of canned products, we realized that we're lost. I can't believe you don't know where they sell milk. I, um... Maybe we should ask someone, somebody for directions. Sure. Hey, wait up. Tresca lets go of my hand and walks confidently towards one of the few store customers. That person is standing with their backs to us, studying something on the shelf. Hello, can I... I can't hear neither the second part of his question, nor the reply he gets, but my good-for-nothing friend freezes in place, looking the customer straight in the eyes. I hurry towards them. Is he yours? The customer talks to me. He speaks with disgust while wearing a scornful expression. I, um, and he's yours. Please get him away from me. Yes, I'm sorry. I grab Triska's hand and let him away. He's still looking at the customer. His mouth ajar and eyes popped. He's also shaking. The fuck? Only when we turn around the corner, Triska calms down. What was that? I... I got so scared. He said... What? No, not again. Suddenly, Triska started screaming like crazy. I cover his mouth with my hand. His face is burning. He's crying. Can you act normal? You don't understand. Of course I don't. I don't understand anything. Annoying other people is still wrong, though. This is something you don't understand, it seems. You're mean, sniffs. Who, me? Jessica pushes me away and runs off. Drat. At the edge of my vision, I see the store staff hanging a new sign on the door. There you are. I meet Terska at the cashier's at the cash register. Before that, I managed to visit the milk department after finding out where it was. Hey, you, move! I hear an angry voice coming from the other side of a long queue that has formed after Terska. I squeeze through toward him. Squeeze through toward him. What happened? The boy doesn't respond. He just looks at his feet and sniffs. The cashier towers over him. There's a bag of milk lying between them. Is he yours? Yes. Just leave him home next time. People in a queue nod in agreement. Pay for the goods, please. Yes, of course. And the waiting fee? What? You heard me. I did, but that's unheard of. Cheska starts giggling all of a sudden. And for the fact that you're Whoa! Let's not let's not say that. But you heard me. You know what? In a fit of rage, I threw a banknote to the cashier of a much higher value than needed. Even counting in all the stupid fees, then grabbed a bag of milk and returned around on my heels. We're leaving, Terska. Yo, what? We spent the whole trip back in silence. At some point, we ended up turning right towards the gas station. There, Terska finally breaks his silence. Do you like ice cream? No. Okay. I look at the boy's face. A light flickered in his eyes for a brief moment and then goes out. You know, he turns away from the path and walks straight towards the highway with determination. I stare at his back confused. Yo. It seems 
looks like you're not helping me at all. A new, play f a new playful light flickers in Terska's eyes. Something happened. <sighs> milk outside of a bag, outside of a bag of milk. Game by Nikita Koryukov. Koryukov. Script. Uh. 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 Well, that's it. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Bag of milk outside. Bag of milk. Um, indie game. It's like horror suspense. It's got all this like psychological stuff going on and very um, visual. <laughs> you know, I just saw that there. Um, got it on Steam. It's a cheap. It's a cheap game. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just trying to play like weird games. Uh, but that does it for this this game. It, it it wasn't that long. It's probably like it's probably like almost 45 to an hour long, like minutes. I don't know if it's one of those games you have to kind of like replay to get more out of it. Cause there was something there that I didn't even like like it wouldn't let me click on like that thing where like the bag freezes and I don't know if I'm supposed to be clicking stuff during like the dialogue or something but that's it but let's see what happens at the very at the end what if it takes me back but yeah to just okay there we go it says continue our new game uh, but that's it I don't think I'm gonna I don't think I'm going to get more into it, but um, thank you all for watching. Uh, um, I appreciate that. Um, uh, you guys have a good weekend, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.